Hey everyone, how's it going? And welcome to the IGN gameplay reveal kind of thing. We're doing a third one of these. So basically, IGN has more gameplay about Sonic Frontiers that we can finally take a look at. And from what it looks like, we're going to have some better looking video to react to because that last one, ugh, just no one all on all fronts for that one because that was just not happening. That was that looked terrible. Anyways, uh, we're going to be taking a look at that, and I'll give you my thoughts on it when it's over. So, let's begin. Sonic's done a lot in 30 years. He's oh, of course, they used the Switch Online version. Platformer, an Olympic athlete, a respectable kart racing enthusiast, a fighter, a TV star, and a Hollywood blockbuster movie star as well. But he's never done open world, and Sonic okay. Frontiers fixes to change that. It does I'm look a little better now. Uh, I take Sonic that back, kind of? With Sonic Frontiers, and let me just say, if you're worried about how the blue blur will fare in this unfamiliar genre, well, hmm. I think Crush 40 probably put it best. Open your heart. It's gonna be all right. Oh, shut up. The first thing that struck me about Sonic Frontiers was how uniquely somber and serene it was right from the outset. After flying into a wormhole with Tails and Amy, Sonic finds himself separated. So Sonic, Tails, and Amy are all in this. So that voice was Amy. Nothing but an AI voice. Uh, if you didn't know, there was like a voice. Huh. There's no one for Sonic to bounce quips off of. No energetic Crush 40 soundtrack. Just wide open fields as far as the eye can see. There's okay a then. And it's a vibe that's driven home even further by the beautiful yet minimalist piano melodies that accompany Sonic. I'll be honest, I, I do like the piano. It, it is nice, it does fit the open world, but I don't like how everything's kind of popping in in the overworld. Also, it might feel like what Twitter is saying is not true about exactly how early of a build this is, because would they really make a third video off this? And he said, past games in the Sonic series have taken different tones depending on their stories and themes. This time, these mysterious islands are the game's major setting. That's why our artists have worked hard to create a mysterious mood. Of course, the big okay, change in Sonic Frontiers is the shift from purely linear levels to a huge open world where Sonic can freely run in any direction. But Sonic Team doesn't like to use the term open world to describe Sonic Frontiers' gameplay, instead referring to its style as being open zone. Open world games open like zone. or other AAA games fundamentally have RPG or adventure worlds. For Sonic, the core here is a 3D action game. Our basic idea was to have that take place in open space. What sets Sonic Frontiers apart is this different approach to an open game world. Having played Sonic Frontiers for about four hours, it's what? easy to see what Izuka-san means. Sonic Frontiers' open zone design is very different from any other open world I've played. It's a giant playground. Every few feet, there's a bumper spring that bounces you like a pinball between five other bumpers before putting you on one of the many grindable rail tracks. Or a speed ramp that sets you on a completely different path, leading to some I... collectible or reward. See... Or a line of rings that you can light speed dash into. I don't know. Wait, light speed dash? Of every Sonic level having multiple paths that eventually loop back. Well, it's good to see that back. And applied that to these giant non-linear open zones. One thing that has to be noted is that very few of these elements are built into the environmental design, meaning that rails, platforms, boost rings, and so on are just inexplicably floating in the air all around, which isn't totally unusual for a Sonic game, but it feels especially jarring in Frontiers in particular because wow, even the IGN thinks so. In of these objects and the otherwise very naturalistic art style. Of course, it's worth emphasizing that this gameplay and the version that I played were from an early build. But this is definitely an area that I would hope to see. And now the excuses come in. Okay. That there are also a wide variety of puzzles and challenges that are littered throughout the zone. And completing them is how you uncover sections of your map. Most of these are very simple, requiring you to orient a statue the correct way, quickly okay. walk back and forth between colored tiles, side step. or use Sonic's new side loop ability to draw circles around certain objects. Side loop. Okay, now I know it's got a name. The best ones, though, are the races against the clock where you have to get from point A to point B in a limited amount of time. The openness of Frontier's level design makes straightforward <sighs> races like I don't know about this one. Because you have to try and improvise a path to the end that might not be immediately obvious. Is that what the seagull is for? Probably not. There are some exceptions, but combat in traditional Sonic games generally isn't a thing that goes much deeper than jumping, rolling, or using a homing attack into enemies at the right time. 
That changes in Sonic Frontiers, which now has you fighting all sorts of wandering enemies and mini bosses using an all new array. Okay, of I want to hear more about this. Attacks. It's not all style and no substance though. Sonic is able to quickly dodge using the bumper buttons on the gamepad, and by pressing them together, he can even parry attacks with the right timing. Oh! Also feels okay, cool. So it's not just a dodge. That's good to hear. Sonic stuck to his enemy, allowing for a flurry of follow-up strikes. One of the things I really appreciate about the combat from what I played is that there are usually multiple ways to deal with specific enemies. Like, take for example... That looked pretty easy to take care of. Oh, this one, I hated seeing this fight. One way to deal with him is just to carefully time your homing attacks so you don't get hit by the blades. Okay. If you do that, the window to damage him is small. To increase that window, you can either parry the blades and knock them away right before they hit you, or you can even use Sonic's side loop ability to... Oh! Causes the shell to go flying see, up. now this is what I wanted to see more of. It's like, how do you handle enemies that are weaker? These enemies will reward you with EXP that you can use to purchase new skills from a skill tree. Which gives Sonic Frontier okay, so there is a skill tree. All right, good to know. Even in just the relatively short amount of time that I played, some of the later skills that you can get are just unbelievably cool, and it's super sad. That did not look very effective. With different ways that Sonic can attack enemies. Yeah, I, I forgot to mention that. That entire thing did not look very effective, except for that last move. There are also a handful of enormous world bosses that I had to contend with. These are near Shadow of the Colossus-esque in their scale, with one in particular against a beast named Osura, requiring Sonic to bait the Titan to slam the ground and then boost up its arm in order to reach the weak okay. spots on its head. It's an ambitious boss battle, far beyond anything I've seen in the Sonic series to date, but it's also the part of the game that needs the most work. Far too often, I'd fly off the boss's arm without knowing why, or I'd get to the top and for some reason lack the momentum needed to actually reach the head. Sonic must hunt down and I like that I'm hearing criticism about this. Gears, which open up portals that lead to and you can still climb up the boss. Okay. The style of previous Sonic games. So it's not just uh, if you fly off, you're done, but there's also like it, it clearly has like its flaws shown out right away. But it does give you an opportunity to climb yourself back up. Okay, so I do appreciate that. I know I'm like talking over certain points, but I don't care about the Chaos Emerald Sonic stuff yet. Sonic is an exciting new step forward for the Sonic series into uncharted territory, and based on my time with it, Sonic Team seems to have but hit upon. But if it's an order. open zone There's world or something like that, done, is there going to be like towns and people to talk to or something like that, or is it just going to be a, a bunch, bunch of nothingness? Squashed, and the big boss fights could do with some tweaking. But ultimately, my time with this early build answered the one question I had on my mind. Will Sonic's one-of-a-kind gameplay translate into an open world? The answer is a resounding absolutely. Uh, and tune into IGN for more Sonic Frontiers. We could always use a demo to show to see if that's actually true else, because here, it does look a bit clunky. Um, what I wanted to say is that like uh, uh, the other thing with open worlds is that we have like towns or other people to talk to or NPCs. Uh, I know Elden Ring's kind of a the exception of towns but there's like npcs to talk to like people that you would be able to get help from or whatever or give you something to push you along a different way uh so that's what i wanted to know were we going to get something like that or is it just going to be like open nothingness for the entire thing and um i, I think i do want to go back to hear more about the chaos emerald thing uh stuff so here's a really nice feeling of power progression even in just the relatively short amount of time that i played some of the later skills that you can get are just unbelievable okay. attack enemies. So a handful of enormous. I want to see more about this. I had to contend with. These are near Shadow of the Colossus esque in their scale, with one in particular against a beast named Osura, requiring Sonic to bait the Titan to slam the ground and then. I mean, the idea is cool, but it seems like it's so easy to get stuck. It's an ambitious boss battle, far beyond anything I've seen in the Sonic series to date. But it's also the part of the game that needs the most work. Far too often, oh, the... I'd fly off the boss's arm without knowing why, or I'd get to the top and for some reason lack the momentum needed to actually reach the head. Sonic must hunt down and defeat these bosses Ooh. in order to collect portal gears, which open up portals that lead to bikes. So it doesn't look things. like you Sonic run directly. So it doesn't look like you're like dictated exactly where you run with these. Each come with a handful of optional goals, That's a double edged sword. So it's not exactly time, stupid easy, but it looks like it might be a bit so difficult. Rewarding you with a vault key, which are needed to unlock the coveted chaos emeralds. Vault keys. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Okay, so the vault keys. The vault key is what you need to get the chaos emerald. All right. 
Good to know. So yeah, I'm still not completely sold on this game. I need to see more about it. Um, I cannot wait to see the Twitter discourse because that has been absolutely amazing to see. Ugh. Anyways, um, I didn't have a whole lot to react to. It just it was just someone talking about their impressions. I know I was talking over it uh, at, po at points. There were like little details that I wanted to know about this, and I feel like I got some information. But a playable demo would be absolutely nice. So Sega, if you ever do have that playable demo, please, by all means, give us an opportunity to try it out. Even if it's like 20 minutes or so to play the demo and give it a shot and see exactly how it is. It would be really nice. Um, I don't have a whole lot else to say on this except for uh, I'm still cautious about this game. But I don't think it's going to be the worst thing to play. But I'm also probably going to make it. So this is probably going to be a game that's like kind of a one and done. You know, I play it once and that's it. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, so that's going to do it for Sonic Frontiers' first hands-on impressions uh, reaction. Uh, if you want to see the whole thing, again, there's a link in the description to IGN's video on it. You can hear more about what they thought about the movement and all that stuff. I still feel like this is incredibly out of place for Sonic because... Um, and somebody actually said it best when uh, on my main channel is that Sonic re works really well with like point A to B destinations, like with his level design. Uh, he works really well with that. I don't know exactly how he translates to the open world and depending on how Sonic feels to move, because from one person could feel one way, but another person could feel another way. And to me, it looks a little clunky still. So I would love to see that demo. But aside from that, um, I think combat's going to be a thing. Uh, it's not going to be the most amazing thing in the world, but it's not going to be the worst thing in the world, so we'll have to see more. Uh, and um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about it. If you're new to the channel and you like the video, subscribe. There's going to be more content coming here for sure. And uh, for other content that you want to see that's related to the VTuber stuff, as you can see, uh, you can join my uh, you can go to my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash gotta be frank. I stream two to three times a week, so uh, we're in the middle of some Kingdom Hearts stuff. Uh, I'm playing that for the very first time, and with that said, I hope you all have a wonderful and safe day, and I will catch you for the next video. I'm... I, I feel we're going to get one more Sonic Frontiers thing, aren't we? Because I'm going to be honest, I'm a little done trying to re wanting to react to this thing, but I know we're going to see more, so if, that, if, if it ever comes by, um, we'll probably be able to talk about it on a Saturday stream or something. Who knows? Anyways, take care.